Wait a minute. Magna was a girl? We are finally back from the break, and this time, we are one step closer to see Mirio's fate. But that's not the main focus of the chapter, no. Instead, the chapter deals with more insight of the temporary alliance with Overhaul and League of Villains, as well as in-depth look on Twice and Toga's quirk. It's essentially an info dumb chapter with a downfall of an angry man, and it ends with a chilling cliffhanger. Now, I was fine with the posted info on their alliance from the previous chapters. But the mangaka insists to go further with it because we need to know every single detail. This time is under Twice and Toga's reaction towards the cooperation. It's nothing wrong with it. But if you want more of the action or the other piece progression, you won't be pleased with the chapter. While I could have done it without it, or more like could have paced it differently, like Maybe it would have been better timing to use that part in the last chapter somehow. I still find this amusing because I do like the fact that we do get more in-depth look of these two quirk. It does present their quirk in a reasonable way since Overhaul and his men need to know their capabilities. That being said, I do like the in-depth look of their quirk. Let's start with Twice. Twice quirk is about being precise on their body form to create a replica. So you have to know every single detail from them. However, the problem is that the stamina will be cut significantly. So if you expect an equal battle, real versus clone, it won't happen. He can create two, but the second one will be even weaker in stamina. Even if it has these faults, it is an impressive quirk. It can still be helpful in any other way. It doesn't have to be in combat situation. Toga's quirk is somewhat similar to Stain. Only is about the amount of consumption. I said similar because the quirk is based on blood and time. The more blood she takes, the longer she can stay in disguise. That's pretty damn threatening. It does explain how she becomes naked. Yeah, we actually got the explanation. It's funny because I didn't expect an explanation behind it. If you recall, I was just fine with the idea that, you know, anime manga, you should just have them naked because logic, but I didn't mind that. It's one of those moments that every piece must be explained. If she wants to disguise with their clothes, she has to be naked first. The best part is that she could transform to multiple person at the same time, so long she takes their blood before heading out. Her quirk is probably the most dangerous out of the two, since it doesn't have much repercussion, unless you consider being naked as one, then be my guest. The other focus of the chapter is Irinaka, or Mimic who has some serious anger issue. The battle against him isn't meant for one-on-one -on -one combat, it's about breaking the maze by breaking him down. I guess you can say it could have gone longer, but I thought the idea behind his defeat is nicely done. It's actually pretty different from the usual just beat the hell out of him. That's why they have to show the flashback with him lashing out constantly. It was emphasized in the previous chapters with his involvement so it ends up being his major downfall. It's a smart yet cruel way from Twice and Toga to get their last laugh over him. The choice of words can easily crawl under your skin if you have so much pride in your family and get angry easily with a simple joke. Every time he does something clever, they just mock him like he is nothing but a wimp. Because of his anger issue, he yells that leads to Deku to detect him and out goes Mimic. That was all his fault. He should have taken anger management, but maybe there is no Yakuza within, so no, no management. I'll say good riddance to that fool, he deserved everything that comes to him. It tops it with Twice and Toga saying their bye in a mocking manner, like bye now, goodbye, haha. <laughs> That's priceless. That's one way to get even. I'm really liking these two. The real excitement is in the cliffhanger because Muriel is finally back. You probably see a lot of death flags surrounding his area. He is now confronting Overhaul, so you could just imagine those flags becoming more and more visible. I do wonder if the timeline description would mean anything. I mean, it could be a tool for the element of surprise. Like if Deku finds Mirio, he will only find his corpse. Imagine that! I know, that's extreme. But the point is, it can be used as a shock value. 
I can't wait to see where this leads to. Though I am a bit frightened because I can't see flags. But you never know. You never know. I thought the artwork in this chapter is very good. While it is not action heavy, hence not that flashy, the tone and design come off strong to make the setting chilling. Even with that one panel with that guy asking question if Shigaraki is planning something comes so spooky. The last double page has that terrifying atmosphere. Something dark is about to go down. At least Mirio was drawn like a certified badass hero. Who knew Tintin could look this strong? It's an enjoyable chapter despite if you weren't in for more info in the first half. It does provide a good depth of the villain's quirk. It has a nice psychological revenge plot against Mimic. That cliffhanger is the show stealer of the chapter. I don't want to say to place your bet on Mirio's fate, but it is here. It's going to be a bone chilling event. I'm giving this chapter an 8. What are your thoughts of this chapter? What do you think is going to happen with Mirio? What exactly is going to happen? Will he get injured? Will he get, you know, killed off? It's a lot of possibility because he's fighting the final boss as one of the editor notes say. And it does feel like the final boss of the arc of course, not the entire series. Let's not go that crazy. Mirio has stepped up to the game to fight the main boss. And now we're going to find out exactly where his fate lies to. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.